All right, if you've been following along on Instagram and uh, such like, then you will know that we had a bit of a catastrophic failure of a component in the new robot cameraman build. Um, this is a drive gear. <laughs> it's the when the main gear that takes force from the motor into the chain of kind of belts and whatnot to lift what is currently the heaviest chunk. Um, and well, it sort of exploded. <laughs> so this was quite exciting. Unfortunately, I did not catch that on camera. Um, I was just testing something with torque and uh, the axial load through it just absolutely blew it to pieces. Um, so in this video, we are going to make a stronger one or hopefully. So there are a couple of things. The first thing that's sort of obvious, let me just try and... So this is one of the fractures, right? And, and it appears right at the corner of this nice sharp internal corner and anyone that knows anything about these things would have told you that, that was obviously a weak point to start with and actually it exploded in essentially three different places all of which were the internal corners of that section and that section is there for this kind of cross piece to, to pin the gear into the axle so this is the new version and it now has rounded corners that will hopefully take some of the pressure off those exact uh, fixed points. But more importantly, this one has a recess in the back for what is going to be a steel plate. <laughs> so it was always the plan to be able to augment the 3D printed. So I like being able to 3D print the gears. Um, I can obviously customize that to exact dimensions where I need them. Um, but obviously, when that fails, um, you know, that's, there's a limit to how strong you can make the plastic, but I can take, hopefully, the precision of being able to print these helix uh, kind of meshing uh, zero backlash gears and apply them to a plate, which is simple enough that I can machine. It's just a simple square. It's going to have some holes in place, drill a hole in the middle, match the slots. So that's a fairly simple machining job, and by applying the two things together, I will hopefully have something that is strong enough to take the mechanical load uh, and precise enough to be the exact fit that I want. So let's do that. All right, so we have a, a piece of steel plate that I've already trued up, squared up, and brought down to the dimension to fit in this pocket. Uh, and I have just used my center finder or my edge finder to get me on center point here. So now, oh, it says dumping a screw into here. Now I'm going to punch the various points. Uh, so center point um, <clears throat> so first thing I'm just going to go to each corner drill and tap a five mil so I, so the the 3d print will bolt into the, the metal plate um, so that should be easy I think I calculated this should be 21.21 let me just do 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 1.21 that way. So I have some slightly odd measurements because what I did in the CAD was I I set these 30 mil out from center and I could do a whole pattern to get at 30 mil, but it seems probably fairly easy just to calculate the x and y offsets for that which is 21.21 or thereabouts so that should get me just as a quick sanity check that looks spot on
sure with these things whether it is faster to drill and tap all in one location changing tools or to go around all the different locations and and then like do a circuit but I think this time I'm going to do them all, all operations in one place so that is a three mil center drill and this should be a 4.2 mil is the drill bit for a five mil tap and then my little tap follower this was aluminium I would probably just try and power tap it but it being steel I think I'm gonna have to do this by hand chamfer or not to chamfer I probably won't bother I'll just run a thing on it by hand when we're done so So the plan at this point is just to drill holes at like the far points of these slots and then some of the meat out and then come back in with an end mill. So basically I know that the end of each slot is at 20 mil from the center. Do, 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 do. That should basically be the full extent of those required slots. Now I should just need to switch out for the end mill, and I've got one of these. So this is a four mil end mill, so we're just going to come down the center of each slot and then trim either side.
that we might want to tickle the edges with a file to get it perfect but I think I think we are there so that is what that looks like and hopefully once we've cleaned up the messy underside with a dealer all right so uh, this should should, he says, basically tap into here. Commissar. And then I should be able to run a bolt through from this side, clamp it in. Let's grab a couple of bolts. Well, there we go, one steel reinforced gear. So this shall still be the thing at the moment that, that is connecting the pin. Let me grab that right there. So this is the pin and uh, it's the end. Doo -doo -doo. So in theory, Basically, this guy will slot in like this. Could do with turning a bit. And then this guy cross pins in. And that all assembles nicely and that will be a primary gear now what's the next thing that will fail probably this plastic piece might now deform or fail uh, and obviously i could create a metal cross pin i could also just tack this plate right onto this shaft but i still want to be able to assemble everything in more convenient ways so for now that is the business all right <clears throat> i didn't want to wrap this video without showing it back in situ i will say uh we'll see if i got lucky i didn't really think about the orientation of the gear that needed to mesh with this gear in relation to where the, the plate would be on one side or the other and because i didn't think of that the bolt heads that are bolting this to here are on the inside i think i have clearance but that would be more accident than intent, which is not ideal. Um, we'll see how we go with this. Uh, I've also quickly clamped a base back on the old trusty stool, which may or may not be the long term base for this thing. Uh, I'm a little concerned that the weight off to one side, I'm going to need more and more weight in the centre, but that's that's all good but I did think I would roll camera whilst I repeated what I was doing uh, when this thing exploded the first time so uh, let's see I think basically by way of a quick test I was just using one of these bars to give myself the leverage I had so I'd added this tensioner to this belt, and so in theory, oh there you go, you see, perfect. Oh, I won't, uh, let me just put a foot down here somewhere, so I've got leverage, so I don't have a huge amount of clearance against this at the moment, but that's fine. But that was kind of what I was doing. That all feels 
pretty good. Uh, let me buy myself a smidge more clearance here. Uh, just chuck a piece of wood under this to hold it up a little bit. Give myself a little bit more clearance. Um, so this should be a case of really putting it under maximum load. So if it goes bang, well, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so this is slipping. I'm going to need to put more bracing on the base. How can I stop that from slipping in the temporary time? Let's check another clamp on there. Do, do, do. Let's. I'm still going to have to stand on this side of the thing just to try and give myself. All right. Really is the moment of truth now, I think. So there's basically, ooh, here we go. So this is essentially the maximum load, right? I've got the full mass out to one side. And obviously, it was around about here that everything went kabang last time. So that's good. It takes a lot of force to get there, a lot of force to get there, which is slightly concerning, but, but the gear didn't explode. So that's one more weakness eliminated from the system. And that's it for this time. Uh, obviously, I'm slowly working on the base figuring out exactly how I want this mounting, how I'm going to fit the motors. A motor with enough power to do this is very tricky. Um, I have an idea, obviously <laughs> this whole section needs to be able to rotate, and that's even more weight. But I have an idea for this section to try and add a counterbalance weight sort of that comes down in the core, which actually will do two things. One will put more weight in the center to offset some of this problem, uh, but also it will mean the idea would be that when it's vertical, that weight will be at its lowest point, and then either way is having to lift that weight such that in theory it will offset some of the power that I will require in a motor to lift this section. Whether that will work or not remains to be seen, it's just an idea right now. But that's where I'm going to leave this video. I hope this has been somewhat interesting to someone. Thanks for watching. See you next time.